Hello there and welcome. In this episode we're going to continue working on our FPS game. So you may notice that we have this strange object on the right side and that's just something that I imported before this episode. So if we start the game and go inside, we can see this shooting range. So this is something I created in Blender. And if you want to use this entire model, you can find a link in the description. Now the model itself doesn't come with any textures, but I just created materials and added them to the different parts of this shooting range. In this episode, we're going to start working on the weapon model itself because right now, we have this weapon dummy and it doesn't look good and we want to start improving our game to make it look better. So what we need to do right now is just import some kind of package with weapons. Now there are a lot of options out there in the Unity Asset Store or anywhere else you want to bring these guns. I'm going to show you three different options that you can find in Unity Store, but of course you can use whatever weapons you want and it's basically going to work the same way. You just need to adjust the model itself. So first we have this free option and that's a low poly models of different weapons and it's quite nice. And this is the free option. So if you don't have money to spend, you can use this one. The next option is this $5 stylized weapon models pack and it comes with better looking models you also get different icons so if you don't have a lot of money but you do want to have a bit more good looking weapons then you can spend five dollars on this one the third option that i found is this 50 dollar weapon pack and you can see that you get a lot of different weapons so if you really want to invest in your game and you want to have a lot of different options then this will be a good pack and of course the quality of the models is even better, but all of these decisions are really up to you and it doesn't matter which one you choose. I will show you how to make it work. So for this tutorial, I chose the $5 one because I don't want to spend $50. I already downloaded and imported the $5 pack so I can find it over here, stylized weapon. And inside we have the prefabs so we can see all the different weapons and we can just use them this way. If you downloaded the same exact pack and you see pink materials over here, it means that you're probably using URP and you just need to convert your different materials. So all you need to do is go back into the materials and you're going to see that everything is pink. So you're simply click and select all and then you go over here to edit rendering materials and then convert selected built-in materials to URP and it will basically convert all of these materials to URP materials and then you are not going to see the pink color. So I already did that because I'm using URP. So we are going to start with a simple weapon and remember with the weapon script we can adjust it, we can change it. So we're going to have a bunch of different weapons but we're going to start with a very simple one which is the pistol. So I'm going to use this pistol one. So we're going to start by dragging the actual model into the scene and we can see that it's blue because it's still a prefab but we do want to change it a bit so we're going to right click and prefab unpack completely. So now it's no longer a prefab. Next we're going to expand the player and we see here the dummy weapon so we're going to drag the pistol inside the player so they will be both in the same place. Next, what we want to do is just to align the pistol to the position that we have our weapon dummy. So these are my positions and you can see that the weapon is now placed over here and you can also see it inside the game screen. But in my case, I also want to increase the size of the weapon because it's just too small. So I'm going to increase it to something like two. And now we can see that the weapon is big enough and it doesn't matter how it looks over here. The important thing is that it looks good inside the game itself. Now we also don't want to place the weapon in the exact middle because usually we hold the weapon in the right hand and we need to create some kind of angle. We don't just want to put it in the middle like an arcade. Next we want to expand the weapon dummy and we're going to place this bullet spawn that we had inside into the pistol. So we're going to drag it into the pistol and then we're just going to 
position it exactly. So we're going to move this. So now it's at the tip of the weapon and this is where the bullet is going to spawn. Of course, make sure that the blue arrow, which is the forward, will be the one pointing out. Next, we also want to take the script from the weapon dummy. So if we're going to add the script to the pistol, it's going to nullify everything. So instead, we're going to click here and copy component. And then we're going to click on the weapon and we're going to paste component as new. And now it's just copying this entire component with all of these settings that we had before. And now that we did all of this, we can finally delete the weapon dummy because we don't need it anymore. Now we can run the game and check if it works. So of course we can play around with the positioning of the weapon, but for now let's see if we can shoot. So if I shoot at these bottles, we can see that it's working and I can also shoot at these bricks. And of course we have the automatic fire on, so I can just hold my left mouse key and it's going to shoot bullets. Another thing I did is making the prefab of the effect we created a few episodes ago to be smaller because the sizes that I gave you made it look a bit too big, right? The bullet should be about the size of a real bullet. So we want it to be a bit smaller and this way it just looks more realistic. Now that we can actually shoot using this model, we want to also adjust the different settings for this specific weapon, because that's exactly what we're going to have. We're going to have a bunch of different prefabs of different weapons, and each weapon will have this script on it, and each prefab will have different settings to make the gun work differently. So let's see, let's start with the shooting mode. It's not an automatic weapon, although some handguns do use the automatic shooting mode, but in our case it's just a single shooting mode, so we're going to change it to single. For the bullet prefab lifetime, we're going to leave it at 3, maybe in the future we're going to change it. The bullet velocity will also stay the same for now, maybe in the future we're going to change it, maybe we're going to increase it using different attachments. So now we're going to change the bullets per burst because this weapon is not using the burst mode. So we don't care about the bullets per burst. So let's change it to zero. Next, we're going to change the shooting delay because this is not an automatic weapon. And there's usually a bigger delay between shots that we do with a pistol. So we're going to change it to something like five. So we're increasing it a bit. And of course, this is something you need to play around with and fit the exact weapon that you're trying to create. Now, the spread intensity, which is the actual spread of the bullet, it's standing on a very low value because that's something that we tested out in the previous episodes. But we do want to have some kind of spread intensity. Otherwise, this pistol is going to be very accurate and it's always going to shoot at the exact point. So we do want to have some kind of spread intensity. So we're going to increase it to about 0.05. Now that all of this is done, we're going to rename this pistol if you want. So this is a 1911 model and we're going to create a prefab out of it and drag it into the prefabs folder. I already have one from my testing. Now we need to do some changes inside the script because inside our weapon script, we are referencing the main camera. But when we're going to make this into a prefab, we can no longer keep this reference. So if you go over here, we can see that the reference will always be gone and we can just put references inside the prefab. So later when we instantiate this prefab into our hands, it's going to miss this player camera reference. So we need to find a solution for this. So we're going to open the weapon script and over here we can see this camera reference, but it's no longer going to be relevant because all of this will become a prefab. So we can simply delete this. And now if we go to this calculate method, this is where we use this camera and we get the point we need to shoot at. So instead of doing this, because it's not going to work, we're going to replace it with And this will simply find the main camera in our scene and it will get the reference to it. So we don't need to add any references into the inspector. We already get the reference for the camera 
automatically. So we see that the camera is responding, so it means that everything is working the way it should. We can also shoot. Now there is this longer delay between bullets, and if we shoot in the same spot, we can see this spread that is created. Now if we go into our shooting range, because this is the place we're going to spend next, if I'm going to try to shoot at something, even the wall, we're not going to see any bullets. Now, it is shooting, but it's just not responding because there is no tag on these walls. And basically there is no tag for anything. On these bottles and on this wall and on these targets, we have special tags. So when the bullet realizes it's a certain object, it can respond to the impact. So in our case, it creates this bullet hole. But inside we still don't have any tags. So all we need to do is select this range or any other building that you're going to have inside the game. And we're simply changing this to be wall. And we can also expand this and you can see that there is a lot of different objects inside this range. So we can simply select all of this and add the tag wall. And now if we run the game and we go inside, we can actually shoot at everything. Now you also notice that there is this big debris and it doesn't look good and it's too much. And more importantly, this debris is only relevant when we shoot a brick wall or a stone wall. It doesn't make sense to have this smoke when we're shooting a metal door, right? Or when we shoot wood or when we shoot glass. Each kind of surface, each kind of material should have different impacts. So maybe if we shoot at this glass, it's going to create some kind of cracks. And then when we shoot a bunch of times, it's going to just shatter this glass, right? And if we shoot at wood, there should be no smoke. There should only be like a very simple hole. And when we shoot a metal object, then there should be some kind of sparks. So again, it depends on the amount of realism you want in your game, but we are going to change it later. We're going to have a different impact for each material. So for now, we're just going to disable this smoke because it doesn't look good. So we are going to open our prefabs folder and inside we have this effects folder. So if we open our bullet impact, we can see that for some reason this main object has a particle system and this impact debris have a particle system and I don't remember why we have both of them, maybe it's just something that I forgot to delete, but the one that is working is not this one that is on the impact debris, it's actually this one. So we need to delete this one from the impact debris. And then we will go to the main object and we're going to copy this component and we're going to paste it over here. So paste, component as new, and it's going to paste the particle system that we had over here. And now we can delete this one from the main object. And we did all of this because now we can simply disable the debris without disabling the bullet hole. Before the particle system was on the main object so we could not just disable this otherwise also the bullet hole would not be visible but now that we did all of this we can shoot and there will only be this bullet hole but we are not going to see any smoke now here it looks less nice because we do expect some kind of smoke but when we go inside and we start shooting at different materials it just makes more sense that there is no smoke And of course, later we're going to add sounds to the shooting, we're going to add some kind of muzzle to the gun, some animation to the gun, so little by little things are going to feel better like a real game, but for now we just want to take care of these things. Now if we look at this bullet impact prefab, it's called bullet impact stone, but we want it to be general because later we're going to use it for different kinds of materials, not only stone. So we're going to rename it 
to just be bullet impact effect. And then inside, we're going to rename this one to be stone impact debris. Later, we're going to have some glass impact and some metal impact, and we're just going to have them together and we can activate one and disable the other depending on the material that we're shooting at. But it's something for a different episode. So that's all for this episode, nothing major, but we did create a weapon and we set the different settings for this weapon. So this way you can now spend your time importing all the different models of the weapons, placing a script on them and finding the exact settings that each weapon needs. In the next episode, we're going to continue. We're going to add more things. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed and see you next time.